Kurt Franklin has been in hot water lately because of his lyrical gaffe at the BET Cypher. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. The blunder being that most people associate the lion and the lamb as Jesus, and Kirk admitting that in hip hop, the goat is referred to as the greatest of all time, which he also says is Jesus. But this reminded me about a time where Kurt Franklin was in the news for something else. A public worldwide confession that made its rounds from niche Christian television all the way to the likes of Oprah. So on this video, we'll be taking a look back in time when Kirk Franklin publicly made this confession, how it involved his wife, and ultimately where he felt the weak points were exactly within church culture. Bruce Lawn. I need you guys to watch this video to the very end because there's a very practical side of this that I really want every single person to take in. This is something that happened in the mid 2000s or the early 2000s rather. And I remember catching wind of it, seeing it on Oprah, seeing this being discussed and this blew my mind. And I'll tell you why towards the end of this video, but let's jump in um, to this exchange that happened and there's going to be some stuff in here that's shocking there's going to be some stuff in here that's encouraging and but just pre-warning make sure you <laughs> had your kids had your wife explicit 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 let's jump right in okay here we go has sold more than 10 million albums in less than 10 years he's a three-time grammy award winner and a seven-time dub award winner yo kirk was the man back in the day okay but Kirk's career came to a screeching halt a few years ago when his private, or should I say secret life, was no longer a secret. So this is when the Stomp song came out. I remember being in high school and this record was played everywhere. All right, so let's jump right into this conversation. Who's got the big brother, who's got the magazines up on his bed. And that's how it starts. And the first time I ever saw one, I was maybe like about eight or nine when I, when I saw my first magazine. And from there, I was addicted. Do you bring that into the marriage? Yes, I did. Was she aware of it? Not the first year, but when the did, second year. When did you find out? How did you find out, Tim? Well, once um, he realized that he was having a problem, he just came to me and he said, No, 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 baby. Let's even make it more real. Let's even keep it real. I tried to. This is the bombshell that blew my mind, okay? How did she find out about his addiction with P O R N? This is going to blow your mind. When we got married, because I still had those single male ways. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And so. Uh, I didn't realize this what he was. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I would say within our second year marriage, he tried to implement it within our marriage. You mm -hmm. know, watch this with. This man. Yeah. Me, honey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, watch it, this with me. Honey. It made me feel dirty. It didn't make yeah. our um, our intimacy sacred to me. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I was like, I'm not watching. I would get angry. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I'm not watching it with you. Now, what happens? And his assessment of this is is insane, okay? He had no idea of the extent of Kirk's problem. I didn't see any evidence that he was doing it at home. He knew how I felt about it, so I, I, would, was. I would think that he was hiding it from I was. So you had a secret life? Yeah, I was doing it at home when she was asleep. You really? Know? Yeah, yeah, when she was asleep, I'd go upstairs, you know, yeah, yeah. How did you finally get to a point where this thing has got to be dealt with? We were in Los Angeles, and we were in the bed uh, that morning just in the hotel, and we were laying there, and I said, baby, I need to tell you something. I said, I'm struggling with pornography. I mean, it is a struggle. I have a problem mm. with pornography. Mm. It's a problem. And your response to me? My response immediately was just to be, be sensitive to it. What blessed me is that he did look at it as a problem, that it wasn't, you know, a lot of guys can have an attitude of, you know, it's normal for, you know, a it's man. A man thing. Yeah, it's a man thing. Yeah. And the fact that he wasn't coming to me. He owned it. He owned it 100%. Like that blessed me so. Yeah that I just began to just, um, you know, pray for him consistently. And I knew that I wanted him to know more than anything that this was something we we're going to work through together. together. Shout out to his wife, man. Uh, someone that's been in a similar situation in terms of having all kinds of stuff from my childhood that went into my adulthood from SA and then the being, you know, uh, addicted to this sort of stuff in marriage. A wife's response to this sort of confession is... Uh, is is so important, right? So the fact that she uh, uh, appreciated his confession and that it was a problem, but also that she was able to work on it with him, um, I think says a lot about her character. Guys, make sure you smash this like button real quick for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help us out a ton. Let's get back to this clip, though. That's what's so weird about porn yeah. is, is that you have different people, even in the body 
to feel different about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I didn't know this. I didn't know this was a thing. I mean, I know I know there are some guys that are like kind of cultural Christians that don't have a problem with it, but this this blew my mind. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Like, there are some Christian men that I know that would say that I'd rather do that than cheat on my wife. When I've had to, you know, shed light on is that dude. You're we are cheating on our wife. Yeah. We're cheating on our wife because whatever men thinketh, so is he. Yeah. So, so we're cheating. So you have a woman now who's willing to walk it through with you. So what are people who, who are... Yeah, looking at, looking at PORN is definitely cheating, for sure. You're in it now. I mean, you're leaving this secret life and you're scared to death somebody will find out about it. It's weird, man, because think about it. You're talking about, you're talking about a dude that was a minister of music at a church when I was 11. Mm. You would think that, you would think that the body was, to, it, it, it's, it's almost like I gotta sometimes check myself because sometimes there, there, there's an anger mm. that rises up in me and I get evangelically ticked off. Mm. Now, guys, what he is about to say next, and you're actually gonna hear from Kirk's pastor at the time in the middle of this, I think says a whole lot more about a lot of the culture around this thing than just Kirk. But before we get there, I got to make sure you guys know about October 20th, our podcast launch party, and that you guys don't miss it. So I'm going to show you guys a brief foreshadowing, a brief preview of what is to come, and the link to get tickets is pinned up. Check this uh, little little preview out. I've always thought it was nasty to not put in two weeks. Mm -hmm. I quit that day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, like, wasn't even in the mood to, like, sleep with these girls, but I felt like I had to. How come none of these personalities are ever doing anything benevolent? <laughs> so I think that there could be a spiritual, maybe potential demonic component that's in there that we haven't explored. The fact that I was single until I was 40, and yeah. I knew I was never going to plan a church being yep. a single guy. I wasn't going to, I wasn't about to set myself up. You know, and then I remember one time my uh, financial advisor at the time, she was like, hey, did you know you're spending more than you're making like every month? And I was like, oh, for real? And I'm supposed to, you know, perform yeah. this uh, production assistant. It's like, hey, here's a Viagra. Take it if you want to take it. Whoa. Don't if you don't. It's in your hand. It's yours. I teamed up with Moment for the exclusive live premiere of the anticipated Bless god podcast and the tickets for that are only seven dollars when you get to the main page click the yellow get ticket button scroll down to the add-ons and throw in your ticket to the after party as well as some exclusive merchandise and i will see you there bruce lawn now before i get to i think one of the most important parts of this clip and Interestingly, how this may all tie in together, I gotta make sure that if this is an issue for you, if this is something you're struggling with, I actually put together a completely free resource, a free course with me and my Christian therapist just to help men who are dealing with this sort of addiction or really addiction in general, and it's called Master My Habits dot com completely free where you can get some of the resources you can understand how your brain works you can understand how to find freedom in this area because you do not have to be in bondage to this a lot of us grew up without that hope and without the practical and the spiritual guidelines on how to break free from this area so because this has been a victory in my life it sounds like it's been a victory in kirk's life i recommend you check that out mastermyhabits.com let's get back into this clip what he says next i think is going to blow your mind mm. about the fact that i wish somebody would have taught me a long time ago the repercussions mm. of sex and flesh and lust and vanity and pride and ego and, and, and all these other things. I wish somebody would have been holding my little behind accountable mm. years ago. But mm. let me tell you what happens to the gifted. The gifted in the church, mm. they slip right through. Woo! He said the gifted in the church slip right through and that he wishes someone would have told him the ramifications and the consequences of, of getting into uh, this amazing blessing that God has for people that are married, but doing that prematurely and the implications of that. And he said, those of us that are in the church that are gifted will slip right through and won't be held accountable. And then watch where this goes. Why? Because the gifted are able to naturally and emotionally control the atmosphere of the service. So we relate to you based on the gift rather than you as the man. There you go. Sheesh! He said the gifted are able to naturally and emotionally control the atmosphere in the room. He's talking about music, right? Preaching, that sort of thing. And then that allows them to not necessarily get checked and held accountable, right? And this is a coach, a, a church culture thing that I would hope we would get better at. And, I, and I'm glad that Kirk said this so many years ago. So watch this. Brother, nobody asked the minister of music if he's sitting up there killing and everybody's crying yeah. and speaking in tongues. Nobody asked him, are you going home that night? How's your marriage? Mm. What's going on with you and your wife? Nobody holds the gift accountable in the body. Even though I gotta, I gotta pull that back one time. Night. How's your marriage? What's right. going on with you and your wife? Nobody holds the gifted accountable in the body. 
Even nobody holds the gifted accountable in the body. Wow. Though Kirk's wife knew about his problem and prayed for him, no one held him accountable. That is until he met Pastor Tony Evans, a man who wasn't dazzled by Kirk's celebrity. Mm. When I first went to his church, yeah. it was 1998, yeah. and I had an album out called Stomp. Mm. I was traveling to, to Dublin, Ireland to do songs with Bono. He was traveling to Ireland to hang with Bono. I know I was getting flowers from Arsenio Hall. I was getting letters and cards from Mike Tyson. I was, you know, hanging out with Denzel and all these other big time celebrities. I was working on a TV pilot for ABC. I'm impressed, man. I really, I didn't realize you were that famous. <laughs> this man's like, oh, I'm impressed. And, you know, Kirk's like, well, that's not what it's about. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, it's all that garbage. None of that junk. You can take to heaven. So, you know, you know right. but, oh. but I was bathing in it. Yeah, right. And a lot of my Christian community was bathing in it with me. Mm. But when Kirk and his family started attending Pastor Evans Church, Kirk didn't receive the same treatment he was accustomed to. You come here the same way everybody else comes here, through mm. the cross. And uh, at the cross, the ground is very level. So you treat it like... Dang, that's a gym. You come here for the same reason everybody comes here at the cross, and at the cross, the ground is very level. Get every... Mm. Come on, no partiality, come on. Dr. Tony Evans is getting it. Everybody else, we recognize your gifts. We recognize it, you know, we honor people. Yeah. Obviously, give honor whom honor is due. But what, there's only one celebrity, mm. and that's Jesus Christ. Come on. With Tony Evans, he could care less who I was, and, and if I didn't get there enough time, I had to sit where everybody else sat. And I got mad at it, but then it was something that was pulling me to it. Mm. And I was crying out to be discipled. Ooh. And so when I called him one night and told him that I need help, I have a problem. Yeah. Since the, the, the sexual area so defines men and is so accessible to men, it's so easily uh, uh, reached after as a defining point. It has to do with who you are, whether you're really a man, and I, you know all of this def wrong definition. But once we can clarify a person's identity in Christ, once we can help them to understand how to walk in the spirit, then they can discover that the, uh, the law of the spirit is indeed greater than the law of the flesh. Mm. Kirk told Pastor Evans everything. In turn, this helped Kirk be honest with the people who mattered most in his life. And that started the journey to healing. Yes, sir. And with yes. Tammy. Yes, sir. And you saw the change in the man. Oh, yes. Definitely. And he, he's clean now? Yes. He, he, Four yeah, I mean, years. But so people Four can years. be set Praise free from God. this, but they're going to have to admit they have the problem, and they're going to have to come clean with somebody who's going to yes. hold them There's a process to it. Yeah. If I have been set free from this one, yeah. anybody can, because for years I even questioned, mm. could I get free from this one? Mm. Come on. Because, I mean, I was, dude, I, I was doing albums. Albums that people, that God was speaking, that people were blessed by. And I was struggling with pornography. I mean, What We Seen came out in 93. And I was struggling with pornography. Mm. Storm came out in 97. I was struggling with pornography. Mm. I mean, these albums, God was speaking through, and everybody else was getting their victory and walking and stuff, except for me. And I used to Sheesh. question, and, and I almost began to wonder, what's going on? Mm. And what was happening, and this may help people, is that my victory didn't come by my emotional experience. What? My victory came through truth. Mm. Come on. When I was taught truth, that's when I got my freedom. So, gosh, there's so many good things in there. But here's a couple of things I, I, I just I have to point out. He talks about his hunger for discipleship. He talks about his hunger for accountability. He talks about his hunger for being in a church that's going to give him truth, where the partiality of him being a celebrity was suppressed. And you ain't get to sit in the front row. You ain't get to do all the fancy stuff. And so I loved, loved, loved this conversation. And so as people are dragging Kirk right now, as it's happening in real time, and, I, and I'll be honest, I'm, I'm confused with, with some of this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, taking it back. But I understand the history of Kirk and what he's represented and how consistent he's been in pressing into hard conversations, in pressing into discipleship, in pressing into being willing to lead with truth. Even though he's going to make mistakes, even though all of us are going to make mistakes, I hear that and I go, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Someone that's genuinely consumed with being disciples, someone that's genuinely consumed with being in a local church context, someone that's genuinely consumed with truth, someone that's genuinely consumed with following Jesus with everything they have at the peak of their career. Listen, so you guys don't remember this. This is over 20 years ago when Kirk in 97, 98, 99, he was a megastar. This was a, a, a radio record. And at the peak of all that, he was able to be sober and honest with himself and say, I have an issue with this area. And so my opinion is one, this was super inspiring to me as someone that's dealt with it and hearing about this back then and thinking, man, if, if it's possible for Kirk, it's possible for me to find freedom. And by the grace of God and through accountability and through discipleship and all these different things, I found freedom. But also 
thinking in context that th- this man's going to be okay. Whatever he's going through, whatever opinions you have about him now, Kirk's going to be okay. I think his family's going to be okay. I think he's proven himself consistent with the gospel. And so this is why when it comes to that line at the BT Awards, I personally thought that it was just a gaffe. I, th- I think it was a poor worded rap. I think he meant well. And if you guys want to hear my video on that and his explanation about it via tweet and what he meant by it, that link will be over here. You guys could check that out on the Bless God Studio channel, which I'll have over here pinned up. I'll see you over there. Peace.